He's heard it all before. You're a pastor. You're not supposed to get political. You shouldn't be talking about these issues, so just stay out of politics and stick to preaching the gospel. Life, marriage, sexuality, borders, ethnicity, these things aren't political. They're biblical. God's Word has much to say about the culture we're living in. This is Our Watch with Tim Thompson. Well, hey, happy Sunday morning to you. Glad to be with you today. I'm Tim Thompson, Senior Pastor of 412 Church in Temecula Valley, and always love being with you on a Sunday, bringing the Word of God into your life. Really, truly hope it is a blessing to you. With me, as always, is Jake Porter. Jake is the Assistant Pastor at 412 Church in Temecula Valley, and as always, Pastor Jake, love being here with you, love doing ministry with you. Yeah, yeah, I love to be here. It's always a blessing. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course, we're uh, we're continuing in on our Second Peter um, series. We call it a series, but really, what you and I do is we teach verse by verse, chapter by chapter, and we're doing that very deliberately because you know we what we want is to make sure people are biblically literate. We yeah. want people to know the Word of God. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially for you know the the younger generation, where where the world wants to share their truth with younger people right. and we want them I love to, that their truth yeah yeah <laughs> and and we want them to know what is the actual truth because right. there is an absolute truth right and it's found in God's word and we want them to understand what it is and and be biblically literate like you're talking mm -hmm. about where they can uh, look to scripture and say okay this is what it actually has to say about my life and they go off and live their life and and they can remember okay I learned about this right I, I know what to do in this situation yeah it's interesting you say they they can remember because that's what we're talking about today is how do you remember? Yeah. And we as human beings, we've been designed to to learn by repetition. We, I don't want to talk too much about that because we did preach a message on this, but um, repetition is is key. And, and that's how God designed us. So we preached a message about this. We're going to listen to a quick clip on this, and then we're going to come back, talk a little bit more about repetition. Uh, we are in Second Peter chapter 1, if people want to make their way there, but let's take a listen to this. We'll be right back. Today, what I want to talk to you about is repetition. And repetition, as you know uh, from me, repetition is very important. I repeat a lot of things, and every Sunday, I repeat the same opening. And I just did it, so I, I won't do it again. Uh, but throughout the message, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make reference to it. And I want you to understand why I do what I do. Why do I say the same opening every single Sunday? And, and some of you are like, okay, uh, here's this opener. And, you know, inerrant, infallible word of God, you know. And oh, well, let's just get through it. But I'm telling you, there's, it's very deliberate, obviously. I do it very deliberately. And it, it has a very biblical purpose in, in doing so because Repetition is how we as human beings tend to learn things. And there are times where Jesus says, this I say to you, and again I will say to you. You know, he's, let me repeat this. Let me say this again, you know. Um, he wants us to get certain things. And, and for us as, as believers in God's word, the idea of continuing to go over it and over it and over it is something that he has established even early on, all the way back in the book of Deuteronomy, when he gave the law to, to Israel. He says this in Deuteronomy 11. He says, Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall write them on the doorpost of your, of your house and on your gates, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them like the days of heavens above the earth. So there's this understanding that God's word is to just come up over and over and over again. Teach them to your kids while you're walking, while you're sleeping, when you're going to sleep, and when you get up, and, and all the time. And the whole idea is, Everywhere, every occasion you have, go over the Word of God. And you'll see if you're in an Orthodox Jewish community, you'll see when the Orthodox Jews go to pray, they have this leather strap, they wrap it around their arms, and they tie it around their wrist. Or you'll see them with this box on their forehead, and in that box is this scripture. Or if you go to an Orthodox 
Jewish, well, not even Orthodox, many Jewish homes have what's called a mezuzah. If you ever go on a trip with me to Israel, you will end up likely buying a mezuzah. Everybody, everybody I know that goes to Israel buys a mezuzah, and it's just this little metal or wooden box, and you put it on the post of your door. So when you walk in, God's Word is scrolled up, and it's there, and it's at the post of your, the doorpost of your home. And they have them at the post of their, their hotel rooms. They're at the doorpost of their businesses. They're everywhere. And you'll see, they'll walk by and they'll touch it or they'll kiss it. Um, it's God's word over and over and over and over again. And that is something that God wants us to do. Repetition is, is a very big key to our Christian faith. It is. It's a very big key to our Christian faith. And and like I said, that is how God designed us. We learn by repetition. You know, when, you, when you're when raising up your, your kids, they, they start to learn how to walk. You know, you don't just take one step and then just never try again. You get up, take one step, take another step again and again and again. And, and your body learns how to walk. It's through repetition that God has created our ability to learn. And, and as we look at Second Peter chapter 1, and we talk about repetition being the key to, to the life that God has called us to live, one of the things it's a key to is a key to diligence. Yeah. You know, if you're going to be diligent, you're not diligent if you never continue in what God has called you to continue. It is the repetition that is key to that. Verse 12 of Second Peter 1 says, For this reason... I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. When he says, for this reason, you know, for for our listening audience that wasn't with us last week, I'll kind of catch them up real quick. He just got done talking about living this diligent Christian life and adding to our faith. So we have our, our faith in God. We add to our faith because, you know, when we first start out, we have very little, right? Yeah. And, and really— we never really have a lot, but what little faith we have, we add to it. We add to it moral excellence. We add to it perseverance and patience and godliness and and brotherly love and and God's love, the agape love. And we, we had a whole message about that and how as you add those things to your faith, you're growing in your Christian life. And God, what he says is God gives you a grand entrance into yeah. heaven. Yeah. And and oh yeah, I jokingly said I don't want the side entrance. The Bible doesn't say there's a side entrance, but all I know is if there is one, I don't want it. I want this grand entrance. Yeah. And he says, for this reason, because of this grand entrance that you can have if you'll increase in your faith and add these things to your faith, because of that, I'm not going to be negligent. And that's the opposite of diligence, right? right. Like Diligence and negligence are antonyms, right. right? So he's saying, look, I'm not going to be negligent. In other words, I am going to be diligent. I'm going to keep reminding you over and over and over again of these elements of our faith. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And like you're talking about, that's if, if we take that to any concept of life, that's how we learn, right? If you think about young kids in, in Sunday school, how do they memorize John 316 or how do they memorize any of these verses or something that they always start off with? And it's repetition. It's, oh, they're singing songs with it. Then they're writing it down. And then it's these different ways of this repetition, right. you know, and I, I kind of think of it as, as this biblical meditation in a way, right? Not worldly meditation where you're emptying your mind and all of those things, but a biblical meditation where it's, you know, related to how a cow is, right. is eating and digesting food. It, it's, chewing on it, chewing on it, chewing on it, swallows it back up or right. swallows it, then regurgitates it. It's chewing on it again, right. swallows it, regurgitates it. And it, and it, and it does this process to, to pull everything that it can out of that food. And it's, it's much of that repetition in a right. way where that's what we should be doing with God's word, right? We're reminding ourselves over and over and over. We're, we're chewing it. We're, we're taking it in bringing it back up, doing it again, you right. know, this repetition. And, and we get that right here. He's like, look, I'm not going to be lazy and, and not remind you of these things. Right. I want to diligently remind you of these things. Right. You know, and it says in, uh, in Hebrews chapter five, because I want to make sure we understand there, there is a need to mature and go beyond these basic elements. You know, I want to make sure people understand that. So we, we do need the reminder of the basic elements, but we also need to get beyond that yeah. in our faith. Hebrews 5, verse uh, 12 says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, 
You need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So there, as in Hebrews 5, the, the whole idea there is you shouldn't need somebody to teach you again those basic elements. You yeah. should be moving on. Those basic elements are the milk. You know, when you first give your life to the Lord, you're like a baby. Yep. You know, and babies, they, they don't eat steak. I, I jokingly say I would love to believe about myself that I was born eating steaks. <laughs> you know, I to me, this whole push to go against steak and meat in our, our culture, to me, is straight from the pit of hell. But there there's the understanding that when you're born, you're a baby, you eat milk, and you graduate on to other things. You graduate on to cereal and squashed up vegetables and, and you know, you you slowly progress in what you're able to take in as a human being. And it's the same thing with our Christian faith. We slowly progress, you know, and there's some, some things we quickly progress, you know, but the thing is you, you need to move beyond the basic things, but it's not that, and I want to make sure we understand this. It's not that you never go over the basic things. Right. It's just that you should, you should get deeper in your faith and deeper in your understanding. Peter, of course, as he's writing this, that's one of his main things is, is knowing God. And you can't know God unless you grow in your, you know, in your knowledge of his word. But we, we, you know, so we need to mature, but this idea of going over these elementary things is so important. And, um, you know, I think about traveling, you know, I've traveled quite a bit in my life and, you know, there's one point, you know, in, in, you know, six year period or something like that, I did like almost 400 flights. Wow. You know, so I, you know, I was constantly on a plane traveling all over the place and, uh, you know, those, those instructions they give you, like, I know, like when I'm on a plane, I know there are six, this plane is equipped with six exit doors, two in the front, two in the, you know, and you know, the, the whole hand motions that the, the, the flight attendant does to point out where these exits are. And should the cabin lose pressure, you know, an oxygen mask is going to fall down from above, place that mask on yourself before helping someone else. And should we land in water, your seat is also equipped as a flotation device. Like I've heard this over <laughs> and over and over again, and it's so easy for me. And I, I'm sure you've done this. You've, you tune that out. You like you like I've heard it. I don't need to hear it again. But should that plane go down, I will be glad that I heard that message over and over again. Yeah. Should the cabin lose pressure, I'm going to quickly grab that thing and put it on my face, yeah. and then I'm going to start helping other people because I've heard that over and over and over again. It's ingrained in who I am. So you know, and that is what is the airline doing when they do that? They're doing their diligence. Right. It is a diligent thing to go over these basic things that people need to know. Right. And imagine if we had that type of reminder over and over and over again when it comes to Scripture, where it's like, okay, I find myself in the situation that I know God's Word talks about, and I've heard it over and over and over and over again. Now that I'm in that situation, now I know what to do. Yeah. I know how to deal with it. I know how to handle it, right? Just like if that plane were to go down, okay, well, it's just in my mind. I know what to do. You, it's it's hidden inside of you, right? Right. You know, God's word should be hidden in our hearts. We know what to do when we get to that, that point. That trial comes, that tribulation comes, whatever happens, and it's like, okay, I know how to handle this because right. I've read about it. I, I, I know what God's word says. Yeah. Yep, repetition. So key in that. We got more to talk about repetition being the key to that diligent Christian life. We're going to take a quick break. Let's do a word from our sponsor, and we will be right back after this. We are in a free speech war. With big tech, Biden is going after independent news that doesn't lockstep with them on COVID, shots, adverse effects, and early treatment. If you value Valley News' award-winning, unbiased journalism and community coverage without a left slant, please support us by going to myvalleynews.com forward slash subscribe and sign up for $5 a month. We can do this. Well, hey, welcome back to the second half of Our Watch. I'm Tim Thompson. With me, as always, is Jake Porter. We're both pastors over at 412 Church in Temecula Valley. Pastor Jake, we are talking about repetition. Yep. The importance of repetition, it being the key to a good, healthy Christian life. God has designed us in a way that that is how we learn. We learn by repetition. And we we talked in the first half how repetition is the key to diligence. And we also want to talk about repetition being the key to stirring one another up. 
Yeah. You know, we, we look at uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, says, Yes, I think it is right, as long as I am in this tent, to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. So when Peter says, I'm going to put off my tent, he's referring to his human body. Yeah. And, you know, Jesus said, in my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not true, I would, would have told you, but I'm going ahead. I'm going to make a, a mansion for you. And it's not that heaven is lined with these massive mansions as we perceive, but what what Jesus is saying, and in in reference here to what, what Peter is saying, and even Paul had made mention of this, our bodies are a tent compared to the mansion yeah. that, that we're going to have in heaven. So our, our spiritual um, resurrected bodies are a mansion. Yeah, you know that they're uh, in a mansion. Let's face it, mansions are permanent, right? Mansions are not a temporary housing. Like a tent is temporary. Yep. You know, we just oh, we we get in a tent, we can set it up, tear it down, set it up, tear it down, and and it's gonna wear out and it's gonna it's gonna fall apart over time. Tents are not permanent, and we look at our human bodies; they they wear out. Yep. You know, over time, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm much older than you and, uh, well, I don't want to say much older, but yeah, I'm no, older. I'm old, old enough to be your dad. So, <laughs> um, I, uh, you know, I'm feeling it now. I'm starting to feel like, oh, my back hurts and my body's starting to creak and, you know, I'm still a young guy, but I'm starting to feel that. And Peter, no doubt was feeling it. Yeah. Peter had lived a hard life. He was a fisherman. He lived a hard life. And now coming to the end, knowing, he says, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me, he is going to go and die a martyr's death. Yep. He knows that this is about to happen. And as he's going to his death, he's wanting to leave a legacy. He's wanting to remind them over and over again of these things that are important. And one of the reasons he wants to remind them is he wants to stir them up. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what he says. He's like, as long as I'm in this body, you know, I think it's right to stir you up yeah. by reminding you. Yeah. And and that's what we should be doing with, you know, other believers, people around us is, is how can we be stirring each other up? Meaning how do we encourage one another? Right. How do we work together? How do we operate as the, the capital C church together? You know, right. I think a lot of times, you know, especially when I was talking to the junior hires and high schoolers, a lot of times there's division between some of these kids, right? Mm -hmm. Is there gossiping about each other or, you know, somebody date somebody, they break up and then it creates a, an issue or there's all kinds of things that happen and it creates divisions between friend groups. It creates these, these little clicks. It creates stuff, w you know, between people and that's, that happens. But how do we set those things aside and say, look, where there's a bigger reason why we're all here, right? There's a bigger picture. How, how can we stir one another up? You know, and I think reminding this this reminding of these things. Look, why are you here? What what are you doing? What what are these these basics that we talked about before? You know, and you do it with this repetition. And if everybody, you know, in a group, let's say, was continuing to stir one another up, continuing to encourage one another, how much more effective could we be? Right. Yeah, and we we should be doing that according to Hebrews chapter ten. It says, "Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good work." We want to stir up these things in us. And we're not supposed to forsake the, uh, the assembling or forsake the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day, that word day, capital D, day approaching. We're talking about the return of Jesus. That's coming up quick. Yeah. And if ever there was a time for us to be stirring each other up towards love and good works, it should be right now. And that stirring up happens when we, we repetitively go over the Christian faith. You know, when we, we see somebody who's struggling and they're, oh, I just, you know, I just don't feel peace right now. Well, God will give you peace. You know, God says to not be anxious for anything, but in all things through prayer and supplication, let your request be known to God and God will give you a peace. He will guard your hearts and your minds. He's going to give you peace. It's peace that transcends understanding. Yep. You know, you you spur each other on, stir each other up, get each other excited. You know, and and you you can even in in these days see all the wickedness and go. But God is on the throne. God is going to win. God's already won. We're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from it. You know, we start stirring each other up, reminding each other of these important christian elements yeah and i love at the end of uh verse 25 there when he says and so much the more as right. that day's approaching right 
that means it increases. That right. means you do it more and more and more. And as you see the the things happening in our world that clearly show that we're really approaching that day, well, we should be doing it more and more and more. It should be increasing. Right. Yeah, abs- absolutely. Uh, Titus 3.8, this is a faithful saying, that these things I want to affirm constantly. Yeah. In other words, very repetitively, I'm going to go over and over and over and over and over it, affirming it constantly that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. Now, make sure it's clear to our, our listening audience, maintaining good works is not what gets you to heaven. Right. It, but maintaining good works is proof that faith is at work in you. Yeah. You know, we, we get to heaven not by anything we've ever done, not by the good works we do. It's all because of what Jesus has done. That's the way to heaven. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody gets to heaven unless they go through him. But once our faith, our, our fate is secured, once we know where we're going, we know we're getting to heaven, we know how we get there, then we want to see our faith at work. We want to see how, how God is working in us, and that doesn't happen if there are no good works. Faith without works of course, is dead. Um, let me let me bring this final thing up here. Re- repetition is key to leaving a legacy. And it says in verse 15, moreover, I'll be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. And, you know, that that idea of after my decease, and I think about a, a good friend of mine, um, Senator Mike Morrell, former uh, California State Senator Mike Morrell, what an incredible man of God. And yeah, we, we were talking about Proverbs 13, 22. It says, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And as I was talking to him about that, he said, you know, Pastor Tim, it's it's money. Yeah, you leave an inheritance. But he goes, it's more than that. He says, I want to leave an America for my children's children, an America I got to grow up in, where people were judged on the content of their character, not the color of their skin, where if somebody is willing to work hard and capitalize on opportunity, they could make something of themselves and live at peace. And he says, I want to leave that. And and if we want to leave, and Peter here, as Peter knows, I'm coming to the end of my life. I'm going to die the martyr's death. I want to leave a legacy. And it the legacy is a legacy in God's word knowing what is right and doing what is right. And I remember my, my son growing up and, and, you know, right around that 16 year old age, you know, that, that mid teenager time, you know, he was like, gosh, dad, does, does everything have to be about God's word? And my response was, yep. You know, and that, that is, that is how it has to be this over and over and, and constant reminder of God's word. Yeah. And, you know, and you, you've got a young son now and he's at that point where he's, he's starting to talk and he's going to have all sorts of questions. In fact, he's going to ask you one very specific question over and over again. Why, yeah. why, why? And you're going to have to answer him these things. And, and I'm, my recommendation to you and all of our listening audiences Constantly go to God's word over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. A question I, you know, I asked the junior hires and high schoolers when we talked about this was what are people going to remember you by after you die? At some point you're going to die. One out of one people die. Unless the, yeah, that's unless an Jesus, alarming statistic. Yeah. Imagine <laughs> that, you know, unless yeah. Jesus, unless the rapture comes, we're going to die. Yeah. Right. So what are people going to remember you as? What is your legacy going to be? Are people going to remember you as the guy that always, no matter what the situation, always point brought it back to God's word? What yeah. does God's word say about it? Or are you going to be remembered as the the player or the, you know, the person that treated people poorly or, or right. the gossiper or, you know, and how do you get those reputations? How do you get that legacy? It's repetition. by the repetition. Right. Right. So what are you how are people going to remember you? It's by the things that you repeatedly do. Right. You know, so just consider, okay, well, what do I repeatedly do? Yeah. You know, what are my repeated actions to how I treat other people and the things I say and, and what is my and legacy? do they line up with God's word? All right. That's the key. Yep. All right. Well, thank you, Pastor Jake. Love doing ministry with you. Yeah. I always love it as well. Thanks for having all me. All right. All right. And I want to thank you all for listening in today. I really, truly hope this was a blessing to you. God bless you. We will see you next time right here on Our Watch with Tim Thompson. This has been a production of Our Watch with Tim Thompson. We hope you are encouraged to engage the culture around you. We want to invite you to connect with Pastor Tim by going to the Connect page on ourwatch.com. That's O-U-R watch.com. 
Until next time, this is all of us at Our Watch reminding you to be bold, be strong, and to take back the public square.